right, <clears throat> let's do a brief history of Jake Skis. A new ski company I am uh, starting, but it's not brand new from scratch. It's got some history. We're gonna get into it. Starting with this thing. See this thing? This is the ski press I built back in 2008. Pemberton Ski Company. It was Carpathian Skis. In Girdwood, there's a big mountain over there called Carpathian Peak. Even though I was living in Pemberton at the time, I was like, oh, that's the cool name. That's what it'll be. Just in my head, because it it meant something to like this minute number of people. Yeah, that's something in the bushes over there. There's a bear that's been coming around eating chicken food. Um, I was in Pemberton, so Carpathian Peak. Carpathian means nothing to people outside of, it's the mountain range in Romania. Like, this is my hideous branding, right? <laughs> like, it made sense to like 20 people in Gerda who knew what the mountain was. It was the biggest mountain in the area. But the average consumer is like, oh, mountain range in Romania? So they're thinking I'm some Romanian ski building company. Who knows what they thought? No one even knew who I was anyway because it was so minuscule. It doesn't matter. Point is, we're rebooting it. And in the process of that, though, I was a very bad business person. I still probably am. But. I overdid it and attacked it and then had basically say it failed I just like stressed myself out like run out of money stress my wife out and this is like back in 2008 9 and I just attacked it full bore with zero planning like like that was what I was gonna do you know I was 28 years old burned out on you know I was like a pro skier burnout of some sort lost all my sponsors so I'm like I'm building a ski company attack mode scared myself in the process essentially and then launched then boom had kids and then launched into like life reality kept up caught up but in the meanwhile i would keep building skis like once a year like for my own interest just as pure hobby and the only reason i'm talking about now because previously i've been doing these real estate videos it's only now 15 years later that i'm like uh like financially more stable in order i still want to keep tr keep treating ski building like a hobby but watch the numbers so we'll get a number so basically here's what I gotta do before we can get to any numbers I gotta physically get that goddamn press moved Let's put in this new reused Trex on the side of the house is pretty sweet uh, so piles of junk look at this stuff seriously you know what this is this is like Chinese medicine, jars and jars of it, all these crazy labels that my wife's been hanging on to as if we're gonna give them to someone. Like, you're gonna prescribe Chinese herbs to someone? Like, that sounds insane. Like, anyway, <laughs> I've rooted out of this shed. I'm trying to clear space. Piles of skis, biker. I've got some space cleared out because the ski factory. Uh, Ski factory's going in here. That's the chickens. That used to be a sauna, but the chickens live over there now, and it's freaking nasty. So, this has been various. First, this was a this was a dry rental. I had a renter in here for a while. Then it was a workout studio. I had Zwift going, and then friends can stay back here. It's nice and it used to have a heater. The heater needs to be replaced. The gas heater crap the bed. Uh, so the ski factory, Jake Skis, moving here, the press is going to go along the wall. It's kind of weird because it's low ceiling back here. Uh, so this kind of will be storage tucked in the back. That mattress has got to go. i got to throw a new floor in across this. It's literally like two inch foam with plywood on it. Super janky. But I'm going to throw three quarter plywood across it all nice. And then the press. Bench. All this burp's gotta go somewhere. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna do with this. Uh, Prince, oh, uh, sorry, bench. Probably some sort of benches, but it's a pretty perfect spot, actually. And I kept offering to my wife, it could be your massage studio, your yoga studio. Whatever. Anyway, it's mine now. Constant work in progress around here. Oh, look, bike box, ready for Hawaii. I'm bringing the 29er. Carbon fiber, hardtail 29er Jameis. That's the bike. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so my shop used to be in here and it was nasty having all this sanding and sawdust and stuff going on tucked in the corner, but I always dreamed of converting it to a theater room, which it is. It's awesome. 
Uh, it's a little cluttered because I got my goddamn rower and weight bench tucked in here, which used to be the back shed. So I'm just gonna juggle it around. And this is my indoor shop for like nice clean operations. No sanding, no painting. Ski tuning, this is the ski tune bench. Look at it, it's ready to go. Um, so the thing I'm gonna do different is so since I started building skis literally 15 years ago, so I started construction. My construction career started as a ski builder, which seems funny. Uh, I'd done a couple of little weird framing things here and there, but nothing, no real experience. And I went straight into like ski building. And then as that didn't pan out, I transitioned to like house building, chairlift building, trail building, da 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 da, da. You know, but building a ski is the same as a house. You know, your base to your edges and it's a foundation, so it's got to be the right shape going up. It's just so funny how I like did it backwards. But now the point is, I'm gonna come back around 15 years later with that much more actual fabrication experience and do the skis even better than ever before. And then I'm also gonna do different is instead of, I previously would like take orders like, oh, you want a pair of skis that's like this long and this flex and looks like this, like custom, like which is cool in concept, except your customers are always like, no, they're always, it's just you have to make it exactly their expectations or a certain thing, you're trying to meet it. But it's kind of stressful because every ski is different. But this time, I'm going to pre-build 10 pairs. I'm going to try to, I'm going to time it. I'm going to do 10 pairs at once, basically, in a week. I'm going to try to stack. And I talked about doing, I did it once with like four or five pairs years ago. And it was good, but I'm trying to like crank out, you know, I've got my material cost. And I'm going to count my labor cost and see how quick I can do it. And then deciding the rate, well, how much do the skis cost? What are they worth to me? Blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to do it. this 40 hour 10 ski building challenge that's coming up here. Not quite yet. But it's in the, in the works. Right on. Thanks for watching. Oh, well, also, sorry, third, was I've now skied on that many more pairs of skis. And I've got, I've skied on 40 pairs of skis in the last couple of years doing run of the day, which might add to my ability to make a new pair of skis. They're awesome. Yeah, I've been consuming tons of like, you know, called motivational business stuff on the internet. Like, you know, Ed Milet or Alex Hormozzi, I've been liking him. He talks about like extending your timeline to like 10 years and there's more evidence and success the longer timelines people are aiming out of. You know, if you're looking to next week, you're looking at a month or looking to 10 years, you know, the longer the better basically and then all the small pieces leading into that and uh you know and that's and then also he talks about and they all talk about it is to actually turn around and focus on one thing like actually focus on one thing you know i'm focusing and that's where i'm like torn because i'm like oh man i've been focusing on you know skiing's been this thing that's like always there as a hobby doesn't it's never really made me any money but i love doing it. i can't stop doing it basically but then meanwhile, I'm like committing to construction and real estate as my like financial vehicle. Uh, you know, I, I'm telling myself I'm allowed to have a hobby essentially and treat it as such. But then I also am susceptible to things, to my hobbies getting out of control, like running, for example. Skiing I did a long time ago and I broke through that. And then I let running slip into my life, you know, last six, seven years to where all of a sudden I was prioritizing, you know, I'm a 40 year old dude working construction. Then here I am prioritizing half marathon training for these random races that don't mean anything you know they mean something to people who are in them but they ultimately they're not the olympics or whatever right so i've got its ability it's a curse and a it's a, it's a superpower and a curse to be able to focus on things that i can i can focus on things and regardless if i'm getting paid or not i'll do it for the sake of the love of it for fucking ever as the world burns down around me and then also i'm susceptible to multitasking like I like multitasking and I kind of look at like it's a video game with the zombies coming at you and you got a gun if there's one zombie popping up over here you're gonna be able to pop oh there's that zombie shoot again and again and again that would be for you'd get real good at shooting that one zombie is what I should be doing but you get bored of that so then you're like oh let's turn up the level oh five zombies are coming at you so you're like pop 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 then all of a sudden oh ten zombies and you're like well now you're gonna die uh yeah, trying to stay focused on an individual thing. Cause then even this, I'm like, oh, I'm about to finish this Hawaii house. And I have this back in my brain of like fitness adventure boot camp business, like guiding people around somehow triathlon training or something. Like that's crazy, but it could be a moneymaker. It could be. It's the next shiny thing. That's the problem. It's the next shiny thing. I'm not a guide. I don't like talking to people. I'm actually quite antisocial. <laughs> if you haven't noticed. 
only because it's not that I don't like people. It's just I don't. There's not many people that are like running on my same program of general productivity. So I end up hanging out by myself, talking to this goddamn camera. Anyway, I'm trying to fail forward and compound time while remaining hyper focused with a lot of horsepower and luck. But keep in mind, mind that volume can negate luck. Uh, what else can I? What other sticky things can I say? greatest cure for fear is action and how can I make this better I've talked about those already but I got them written on my whiteboard over here so I try to think about them often yeah I'm gonna make 10 pairs time how quick I can do 10 pairs basically assuming say 40 hours in a week uh, but then making them all identical and I'll make I'll come up with my shape I like most likely though I'm gonna be copying these these star X 106s uh, just the general concept of that style like medium fat all around ripper but the point is doing 10 exact skis 10 pairs and in theory the skis would be interchangeable between the pairs you know they'll go as pairs obviously but the point is i'm trying to make them scientifically the same that's my goal and then i'll sit against the shelf on my cool display rack probably gonna be about right here and then they're for sale thanks for watching